If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Okay, two segments left of the war room today, and I am going to do my due diligence and try to uh, pl uh, press through all of the news that I have scattered about my desk here today. Let's start with this story from USA Today. Washington, D.C. may allow 16-year-olds to vote for the president in the 2020 election. By the 2020 presidential election, 16- and 17-year-olds may be able to vote in the nation's capital. D.C. may lower the voting age for federal and local elections to 16. The legislation was introduced a week ago by D.C. Council Member Charles Allen, shocker, Democrat, who said he was inspired by another shocker, the high schoolers that came to D.C. to protest at the March for Our Lives. You know, I wasn't going to comment on David Hogg today because he's become irrelevant, and I was going to let him become irrelevant, but then I realized something. There'll be another school shooting or something, and they'll prop him right back up, and the Democrats will go right back to the same take the guns agenda. It's probably already in the works, maybe a stand down. But let me explain why they want 16-year-olds to be able to vote. This is another way of Democrats rigging elections. They have been brainwashing the students in the public education system for at least 20 years, hardcore for the last 10 years. So much so that they publish textbooks that are anti-American, tell you Trump's a racist, tell you Black Lives Matter is a bunch of saints. I mean, we covered it. We have the stories at InfoWarsStore.com. They, they, they make tests. Teachers write up tests that are anti-Trump, anti-American, anti-free market. We've covered it all at InfoWars.com. We, we, we know that this is going on. So then they say, hey, we need to have 16-year-olds vote because they've already brainwashed them into being liberal Democrats. They've already brainwashed them into hating America, hating the white male. So now they realize that America's waking up and taking the country back politically so this is like a form of gerrymandering, obviously not with, with voting lines, but with age restrictions. So what do the Democrats do? Well, they can't win a legitimate election, so they have to have non-citizens voting. Well, the non-citizens are starting to not be accepted here because we have a border, and even some of them are starting to realize that the Democrats are nothing but a bunch of dirtbags and can never deliver on their promises. So even they don't want to vote Democrat anymore. So what are the Democrats going to do? Well, they're going to lower that voting age and then hope that they have a brand new voter block of 16 and 17-year-olds to try to rig the election that way. A 16 and a 17-year-old voting? I'll be honest with you. I mean, obviously, I don't think we should change the voting age. I think 18 is fine. But probably most 18-year-olds shouldn't vote. And I'll just leave it at that. But now we want to have 16-year-olds voting that are still eating Tide Pods? What was the other thing they're doing? Snorting condoms? Hey, uh, buddy, that's not how you use a condom. But I guess in this beta male society, they probably only want to use a condom for snorting now anyway. I'll, I mean, you know. Jeez. So that's fine. So Democrats are now trying to rig the elections by having 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds vote the age that they've brainwashed in the public edu school education system. The same people that are eating Tide Pods and snorting condoms and couldn't find Syria on a map. Yeah, that's who the Democrats want voting. Why? Because they're easily manipulated. Man, the Democrats are such dirtbags. I just... I feel bad for the youth. I feel bad for the youth, and that's why I worked and volunteered in youth development in St. Louis, in downtown St. Louis, because I feel bad for these kids, man. They get no guidance, and unfortunately, teachers in these school districts are underpaid, overworked, get no respect, can't even discipline their students, so they're basically handicapped. So unless someone comes in from the outside to set these kids straight, 
They have no one setting them on the right course. And it's really sad. And then the Democrat Party and the liberal media tells them they're victims and makes the situation worse. All these kids need is encouragement and the right kind of encouragement. Not victimized encouragement to encourage them to be victims, but empowering encouragement that says, look, you may have it rougher than your next door neighbor. You may have it uh, an impossible stretch seemingly to get where you want to go. But in this country, if you work your butt off and you apply yourself and you set goals, you will be successful, period. But that's not, see, they don't want you to know that secret. That is the great secret of America that they don't want you to know. Despite all the odds that may be against you, if you apply yourself and you work hard and you grind it out, you can be an American success story. You can make yourself. They don't want you to make yourself. They want to make you into a total sponge, an invertebrate sponge that soaks up their, their, their uh, propaganda and then votes for their policies that remove power from the individual. All right. James Comey says that Trump's jail threats are not normal. Well, yeah, James. In fact, uh, they're not normal. Anyone that was normal would already have put your ass in jail. So how do you like that? You want to know what's normal? You'd be in jail. James Comey also says he's never seen Trump laugh. Again, the propaganda that these people shove down your throats is insulting. I've seen Trump laugh every time he does a public appearance. But they brainwash you. They act like Trump's inhuman. <sighs> I'll tell you. Now they're saying that Michael Cohen may flip on Trump. And the, the, see, here's the notion that they're trying to... There's this, there's this underlying notion that they use with all of these headlines that there is something there. There's something to flip on Trump. There's some dirt on Trump. There is Russian collusion. So they run all these stories and all these headlines and everything to have that underlying fake news that there is something on Trump. There is a big secret on Trump. There is Russian collusion on Trump. When, of course, there's nothing. Oh, but, oh, Michael Cohen could flip on Trump. There's nothing to flip. Oh, what? Uh, Donald Trump may or may not have had an affair with Stormy Daniels. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, what will we do? You know, I mean, Barack Obama's husband slash wife may have a ding dong in her pants. Oh, no. Like, it's like, I don't even care about that. But this is what they do. Like, ooh, Cohen could flip on Trump. There's nothing to flip. But that's the underlying propaganda to act like there's something there, even though they know there's nothing there. And so then Comey says, well, I don't know. Trump could have been urinated on in Russia. Trump could have peed on a prostitute in Russia. I, I don't know. I, 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 I just don't know. Well, then who are you? I thought you were the director of the FBI. You're a scum. And then CNN spouts off after James Comey brings it back up about pee tapes 77 times last week. I, you know what they're going to do next? CNN is literally going to reenact the entire thing and and pee on Anderson Cooper pretending he's Trump or something. I'm serious. These people are going that crazy. Then there's Glenn Beck. A total failure, a total puppet who's now having to sell his private jet. Aw. Aw. Poor little Glenn. Poor little Cheeto face, Judas Goat. Little chubby wubby. Well, Glenn, unfortunately, you're going to you're going to have to sell your private jet. Of course, that's the type of person Glenn Beck was. But he's got to sell his private jet. We don't we don't we don't Alex Jones doesn't take all the money he made. He could have Alex Jones could have bought a jet with everything you see at InfoWars. No, instead he builds four studios and expands his network. But get ready. HBO prepares the John McCain documentary. Well, I guess they think with his health, he may be on his way out. But they're going to lift up John McCain as a hero and everything because his rebels in Syria are now being outed as the terrorists. So John McCain was aligning with terrorists in Syria. Did he even know it? Did he even know it? I don't know. All right, final segment of The War Room here today. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. And I am going to just pile drive through the rest of this news before I sign off today. So let's just 
get right into it. Investigators have finally entered the alleged site of the Syrian chemical attack. Here's what they'll try to do. This is from the Washington Post, and the story is that the OPCW, that's the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, they got called in, and then, of course, they couldn't go in to the original strike site of the chemical weapons, allegedly by Assad, of course, fake news, and then they were delayed because of the airstrikes in retaliation to the chemical attack that was never properly uh, evaluated or investigated. So now they go in today, and um, we'll see what they have to say about that, if anything, probably just go along with the whole Assad thing anyway. Israel planning for direct retaliatory attack from Iran. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps is believed to be planning an attack in retaliation for alleged Israeli strike on T-4 Air Base in Syria last week. So that's nice. Israel and Iran are really getting along. And, of course, if that pops off, <laughs> well, you know the USA will be right there to have Israel's back. Journalist who exposed Russia's secret mercenaries in Syria mysteriously fell to his death. Now, this is a weird deal. This is a Russian investigative journalist, Maxine Borodin, who had a series of reports about secret substantial presence of Russian mercenary forces in Syria. Uh, yeah, they were fighting ISIS. Anyway, he mysteriously died after falling from a fifth-floor balcony. Of course, the suspicious death is alleged somebody pushed him out that window. And, of course, they're blaming Russia. And who knows what the real case here is. Uh, but that's the news. And so I just give you the news. ISIS threatens to bomb New York subway in chilling poster, showing a militant with sticks of dynamite at High Street Brooklyn Bridge Station. So that's nice. Nice little loving ISIS propaganda. And, I mean... What kind of a nut job would want to have a border when you've got ISIS terrorists that want to blow us up and kill us? No, I mean, seriously, what kind of fool, what kind of jack wagon would want to have a border where terrorists could walk across the border and murder Americans? I think you have to be insane. I think that we should let ISIS into the country with open arms in the name of tolerance open borders, let them vote, and let them vote. And if they happen to shout Allahu Akbar and shoot up a nightclub or shout Allahu Akbar and run a bunch of people over in the streets with a car or a truck, well, I think we should just ignore that and let that go because we don't want to be deemed racist or intolerant. So I say let ISIS in, let them vote, let them bomb us, let them stab us, let them run us over in cars, don't report on it unless you want to say it was an Asian who was a victim of intolerance, and then maybe we can solve this issue once all the Americans are dead. So thank you, Democrats. Please keep the borders open. Let ISIS in. Radicalize more people to become violent radicals, and maybe they'll join ISIS, and then we can just bomb all of America. I think that that would be great. I think that the Democrats would really like that, actually. So the Democrats and CNN are... Um, uh, loving open borders and ISIS coming in here, blowing us up. The Supreme Court just handed the Trump administration a loss on immigration, and Gorsuch was the tie-breaking vote. You know, it's kind of a misleading headline, to be honest with you. And uh, so basically the story is, I, I don't know, I, I kind of think Gorsuch, this is, this could go either way for me. Essentially, the story is an immigrant, an actual immigrant, not an illegal immigrant. This is important to note. Someone who comes here legally and is an immigrant commits a, I think, violent crime was the sp specific terminology. But if you're a legal immigrant and you get convicted of a crime of a certain nature, you can be subject to immediate deportation. And so there was a case, it was actually a Sessions case, where, mm, kind of looks bad on Sessions, honestly, where a legal immigrant committed a crime, and then was subject to being deported. Now, I don't actually agree with that. I think if you come here legally and you're a citizen, then you should suffer the extent of the law here domestically. 
because you're now a U.S. citizen, but it used to be you would you could be deported for that. And so Gorsuch now says that if you are an immigrant, again, we're not talking illegal immigrants here. We're talking legal immigrants. If you are a legal immigrant and you come here and you're convicted of a crime, no longer can you be subject to that immediate deportation. I think Gorsuch may actually have this right, but here's the funny thing. I, I think it's open for a debate here, but here's the funny thing. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not even deporting illegal immigrants. So we've got a major court case that goes five to four. They say in the favor of Democrats or against Trump. Eh, it's total misnomer. Ignore that fake news. This has nothing to do with Trump. This is a real issue that the Supreme Court is dealing with. And they made a fair decision. And so then they try to use it to demonize Trump, and they know nobody's going to read the story, and so they can just push out some headline. But this is a real thing going on in the Supreme Court about legal immigrants. Meanwhile, illegal immigrants get more rights than citizens, get put higher on a priority ladder than citizens, and, and, and don't even get deported, and in fact have Democrat mayors that are aiding and abetting them breaking the law. That needs to be at the Supreme Court. Sanctuary cities need to be at the Supreme Court. Illegal immigrants need to be at the Supreme Court. It's getting out of hand, honestly. Woman partially sucked out of jet when window breaks mid-flight. Southwest Airlines, you know, they've had like five engine failures in the last two years, and it's never resulted in this, but this is not good for Southwest. I fly Southwest, but... Man, this was some serious graphic uh, image, and I can't imagine being on that plane midair with a window busted out. A woman literally sucked halfway out the window. Oh, my gosh. And unfortunately, you had a fatality there. <whistles> See what happens with that. Oh, boy, that's, that's scary stuff. Snow records toppled in South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. You had, I think, like 10 baseball games postponed over the weekend because of cold weather. So are the Democrats now going to go back to global cooling? You watch. In fact, I'm telling you right now. I predict within the next two years, the Democrats go back to global cooling, man-made ice age. You watch. Mark my words. Democrats will go to man-made ice age next. Oh! Oh! You know? All right. So here's the deal. No one's covering this, and you can't even find this anywhere, to be honest with you, because there's a total media blackout. But, folks, Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein could be in some serious trouble. And I, I won't get too in-depth with this, but let me just read this headlines. These are from the past five years. Treasure Island cleanup exposes Navy's mishandling of its nuclear past. So there's this old area in San Francisco where the Navy had a bunch of nuclear um, elements or what have you, and it soaked into the land, and it was a huge nuclear disaster, essentially. They had to clean it up. They couldn't even go on the ground, and it became a nightmare. So then... The headline was, this former radioactive waste site off the coast of San Francisco is turning into a $5 billion housing development. Okay, so then they go in, they say they clean it up, and then they bring in a $5 billion project to replace the old Treasure Island Navy facility that had the nuclear cleanup. Well, it didn't go so well. Navy do-over of $250 million cleanup at Hunter's Point necessary. So they spent a quarter of a billion dollars, didn't clean it up properly, and then had $5 billion in coming after the project didn't, well, they didn't clean it up. They failed. Uh-oh. And there was a group of black activists that are saying, well, folks, basically they were on there. They were lied to about the cleanup. But I'll tell you what, I don't know how Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein got so rich, but anyone who thinks that those two could be stealing funds in order to get their exorbitant wealth, how dare you? How dare you? I don't know how Nancy Pelosi became a hundred millionaire as a senator, but how dare you think that she would be guilty of anything dirty? You, how dare you? Suicide machine draws crowd at Amsterdam funeral show. Boy, if that doesn't tell you we're in the idiocracy, I don't know what does. Suicide machine? That's right from Futurama too. And then more than 95% of the world's population breathes dangerous air. Major study finds. That's you, folks. That's why we have air filters at Infowars.com. They say we're crazy. 95% of Earth's population breathes in toxic air. We sell the Alexa Pure Breeze air filter at Infowarsstore.com, yet we're crazy. 
InfoWarsStore.com, folks. We need your support. They're trying to shut us down. They're trying to financially handicap us. InfoWarsStore.com. You stay classy, InfoWarriors. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Electrify your day with Secret 12. It's like lightning in a bottle. We all have days in which we just can't seem to perform at the level we'd like to. InfoWars Live Secret 12 is designed to naturally energize your body and mind with two great tasting and super high quality forms of vitamin B12. Proper vitamin and nutrient intake is essential to keep your body functioning at optimum levels. The reality is, it's hard to take in the proper amount of vitamins we need each day with our modern diets. Secret 12 by InfoWars Life is an easy way to naturally upgrade your vitamin B12 intake and support your body's natural systems. It pairs two forms of vitamin B12 into one explosive formula. Vitamin B12 supports healthy energy levels through red blood cell formation and aiding in the body's natural processes, but it also assists with many other functions of the body. Electrify your mind and body and take your health to the next level. Experience the power of Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com.